welcome to Huddersfield in the north of England, a proud West Yorkshire market town built on wool. It's quite a small town, but the people there are very passionate about football. They like you to work hard. Known as the cradle of rugby league, its footballing story is a tiny miracle. Fourteen years ago, Huddersfield Town were at the fourth tier of English football, teetering on bankruptcy. The senior players were stepping in and giving the lads a few quid as well to help them through. You know, it, it was terrible times. But a new board, a brave young German manager, one-time US international, swooped into town. Who would have believed that this man would be a Premier League manager this time a year ago? And powered by the passion of the area, led this team, the Terriers, to the big dance, the Premier League. A team on the up and a club rooted in its local community, striding out now onto the broadest stage it has ever occupied. Proving that it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. Established back in 1908, Huddersfield Town rose to prominence in its early years, capturing the 1922 FA Cup before rolling on to win three consecutive top-flight titles, all before the club's 20th birthday. You've got the three stars on your crest from those three title wins in the 1920s. There are only, indeed, four clubs that have ever earned the right to have three stars. They're, of course, Manchester United, Arsenal, Liverpool, and, of course, ourselves. But one thing I would say is we are the first club to achieve the three stars on the trot. So uh, we're very proud of it and delighted that we have those above our badge. But the Terriers' dominance over English football stopped almost as soon as it had begun. The silverware bounty turned to drought after that 1926 title, and it's been over four long decades since the club last competed in England's top division. But 1992, you made your debut here. The club are in the third tier of English yep. football. Can you describe the state of Huddersfield Town back then? It's a world away from where we are now. Oof, obviously, we were at the old stadium then. Uh, and we used to have to get changed at the old ground, walk down the main road, down Leeds Road, over the canal, and up to the training fields. And there'd be times, and this is no lie, where you'd get to the training field and there'd be a burnt out car in the, in, on the field. It was unbelievable, really. The smouldering wreckage of a car proved to be an appropriate omen for Huddersfield's future finances. Upon overspending in a failed attempt to earn promotion to the Premier League, the Terriers were faced with bankruptcy in 2003 after a petition submitted by the club's players for unpaid wages was successfully heard in court. The court gave the club six weeks to deal with their accounts and their affairs or they'd be made bankrupt. At that time, did the town fear the end? I think so, I think so. You know, I mean, there's a few supporters out there with a few quid, but football money is a very different and Luckily, someone came along and, and saved the club because it, it was that close. A consortium of fans came in and took over the club, and in 2009, fortunes really changed when Dean Hoyle took over the club. He's been a supporter. He was sat in the stands himself, obviously a self-made man, passionate about everything he does, and especially about Huddersfield Town. It was a learning experience for him as well because he brought some managers in that didn't do the job. He, he asked them, and he just kept trying and trying. Then he met Mr Wagner, and the tale from there has been a bit magical. Born in the Rhineland to a German mother and American father, David Wagner was an unknown quantity in England, his managerial experience limited to just a four-year stint under Jurgen Klopp as boss of Borussia Dortmund's second team. You arrived here in England, West Yorkshire, November 2015. Hard to believe now, but Huddersfield back then sat 18th, just outside the relegation zone. This club, traditionally, been underfunded, unheralded. What attracted you here in the first place? I had the feeling my job was done in Dortmund. I, I, I really wanted to have a new challenge. And one of the best opportunities at this time was for sure 
to, to go to, to English football. I haven't known anything about English managers, English football clubs, uh, structures, traditions, stadiums, players. I never was before in England before I signed here for Huddersfield. So it was a totally unknown country for me. Uh, this was what excited me. Then we made the decision, okay, let's start something totally new. Truthfully, when they announced David Wagner is our new manager, was it like an alien that just landed in the middle of Huddersfield? Well, unfortunately, he got caught up in the, the Jürgen Klopp because he's the, uh, the old assistant manager to him at Dortmund. So that's all anyone talked about. But now I think he stepped out of his shadow and everyone knows who he is. I think this was one of the lucky moments I had that I met a group and this group was very, very open-minded and, and very forward-thinking as well. And as the first manager in Huddersfield's 109-year history to have not been born in Britain or Ireland, Wagner hasn't been intimidated by the unique culture that is English football. He continually finds new and innovative ways to prepare his players, epitomised by his first pre-season selection of a training locale. Pampered professional footballers, as they're thought of, into Sweden, a remote island, no ball, survival. How did you experience no, it? No ball, well, no bed, no, uh, <laughs> no food, no shower, no toilet. So it was a tough week, it was. Probably one of the toughest I've, I've probably ever had. I'm sure the, the other lads will agree with me. But it, ultimately it served its purpose. Everyone fighting in the right direction, looking out for each other. All the type of stuff you, you see from team bonding trips. It gave the club a way of playing. Before this, it was no disrespect to the managers, it was boring. You, come, you, you came to Huddersfield Town for maybe a 90 minutes sleep. Suddenly they were passing, they were moving, they were scoring. The goals at important times and winning big matches against big clubs. It was just really, really attractive football to watch, which it's been a long time since they've had that. David Wagner has taken the momentum from the championship, built on it, added to the squad, and they're off to a flyer. I think from the outside, you, you look at it and you see that he's changed the way we play. He's changed a lot of the staff, he's changed a lot of the players. The training times have changed, how hard we train. You know, the club has, has certainly gone up another level, if not two, three, four. They look fitter, they had, a, they had a plan, they had pattern of play. They knew exactly what they were going to do. And, and this is only three weeks after he came, and it, it was unbelievable, and you're thinking, he could take us to the Premier League. There's an incredible correlation between money and success. Huddersfield Town does not have the money that the other championship teams have, yet they still came through. Can you explain that? When you haven't got that facility to say, right, here's five, six million pounds in the championship and here's 25,000 pounds a week, you've got to think outside the box. And that's exactly what he's done. He's been clever in the transfer market, clever in the loan market, and he's stayed loyal to certain players where I think other managers may have given them a little rest. He's powered through and they've, they've done well for him. We've known that we will not be competitive uh, financial-wise, even in the championship, and this was then uh, the reason where we thought, OK, we have to find new ways. And one of the new ways was that we have to create our own identity uh, in this football club. Ragnar calls the style of football he's pioneered terrier football. How would you explain that? A small dog who no one really expects anything of as the underdog, if you like, but who's got to be vicious and fight for everything that they want to get to where they want to be. And ultimately, I think, as you, as you can probably see, that's definitely what we've had to do. A small dog that acts like a big dog. Exactly, exactly that. This is who we are, it's, our, it's on our badge, it's our nickname. And I think when the manager come in, he, he seen that straight away and he thought, you know, this is a perfect opportunity for us to brand it, almost, if you like. And, and that, that's, that's what he's introduced into us. He always says that the team is more important than the individual, which is correct, especially when you uh, play for town, you know, the way they want to play and the way they identify themselves. Um, I mean, that's the biggest, biggest message I got across, and I'm happy with that. Even if you are not the biggest uh, dog, maybe you have other advantages. You, are, you 
can be mobile, you can be quick as well, you can be aggressive even if you are not the biggest dog. So you have to find your own ways and we as a Terriers uh, with our identity, I think we found our way and we will uh, stick uh, to our identity even now in the Premier League. I think it makes no sense to change something uh, what works for you, we only have to make it better. After the break, we'll relive Huddersfield's nerve-jangling promotion to the Premier League. When Schindler walks towards the spot, your emotions as he goes in. And just thinking, like, all this stuff we've worked for all season is basically boiled down to this point. Christopher Schindler, if he scores, Huddersfield are up. Huddersfield is a very special northern town in, in England. I think it has its own identity, and I think it's one with a rich heritage. I mean, our history as a football club goes back over 100 years, but as a town and as a club, it's, it's very proud. If you're coming into the town, you'll soon get into our way of life. Even if you're a German? Even better if you're a German, yeah, yeah, yeah. And David Wagner and Michael Eiffel, Christian Lewis, and all of them, the Huddersfield lads now. David Wagner a Frankfurt, Germany, a financial city, stark contrast to Huddersfield. Yeah, slightly. <laughs> Frankfurt is uh, much more bigger and busy for sure as well. So this is a small town, but a proud town, a real working class area where everybody really tried to invest everything what he has, not only for this football club, uh, for his town as well. And so it's slightly different. You've just moved here. The Yorkshire character, they don't hold back, do they, here? What have you made of it all? I prefer that, to be honest with you, because uh, the way I was raised, I never had it easy myself, so um, I respect honest people. And obviously, it's a bit different to London, where I used to live for uh, four years. Just a bit? Uh, it's just a tiny bit, you know, but uh, I have to get used to it. And so far, everything is perfect. The players, they made it very easy for me to settle in. And, um, it's because they're all German. Yeah, all Germans, exactly. They speak more German than English in the dressing room at the moment, so uh, it's quite funny, yeah. And, you know, our aim is, as the sports professionals in the area is to make the, the town proud. These fans turn up in the numbers, they pay the hard-earned money to come and watch us, and it's up to us to kind of uh, almost put on a show for them and impress them and, and send them home happy. Uh, and that's ultimately what we try to do. In the summer of 2016, Wagner recruited a remarkable 13 new senior players, and that sweeping bold change paid immediate dividends. The Terriers started the season unbeaten through six league matches and ended up finishing fifth, earning a spot in the championship playoff where both rounds were decided by penalty shootouts, forcing an anxiety-ridden fan base to suffer their way to glory. The climax of the 31st season of the Football League playoffs. Reading wearing the blue and white, Huddersfield therefore the psychedelic tops. 88th minute, mm -hmm. you go for a shot. Here comes Huddersfield. We'd live that moment for us. Smith, as he was about to pull the trigger, the ball was removed from the scene by Kermigans and Smith stays down. It was almost like, regardless of what happens here, my foot will be fine either way. It's either it's either going to be, we've won, I couldn't care less about my foot, or we're going to lose, and it won't matter anyway because I'll be that devastated. Tommy Smith, who has been such a key ingredient, carried from the Wembley pitch. The last thing I was thinking about at the time when I was stood on the side with the lads was my foot, to be perfectly honest. I had a big boot on, it didn't make a difference. For only the third time in the history of this fixture, it will be sorted out from the penalty spot. Interesting choice for Huddersfield, second taker. I remember when Hef missed our first penalty. I said, we're going to lose, we're going to lose. And I, I'm thinking the worst by this point. And your team went 3-1 down. I mean, holding on, but barely. What emotions were you experiencing on the sideline? Uh, to be honest, I was totally relaxed at this moment because I was so proud about what the players have done so far. Aaron Boyd, a man from Australia. 
this group was mentally very, very strong to handle setbacks and uh, they always believed and they had this fighting attitude what you need. When Schindler walks towards the spot, your emotions as he goes it. But I do remember him stepping up to it and just thinking, like, as I say, all this stuff we've worked for all season is basically boiled down to this point. What could be the decisive penalty? Christopher Schindler, if he scores, how does field are up? Schindler's penalty, just coolness personified. That's what he's like, Schindler. He's, you know what I mean? he's a good looking lad, got his hair slipped back, never, never gets up and wavered by anything. Just rolls a 200 million pound penalty in the bottom corner, and that's it, away everyone goes. Last time they played in the top division, we had black and white television. That moment was kind of the realization of the dream. We talked about uh, it being a dream here to play in the Premier League. Euphoria, complete, and also, I mean, I couldn't run. All the lads ran off to see the goalie and uh, Schindler, obviously, who's in the, in the crowd with his shirt waving around his head, you know, because I think it really it, it hit home a little bit then for me. I didn't cry on my wedding day when my son and my daughter got, got were born. I, I didn't shed, shed a tear. And I've got to admit, when Chris Schindler scored that penalty, a lump in my throat came, and I had to take, give myself a couple of minutes to, to bring myself round. An achievement they will remember for the respect that it affords them elevation to the top level. There are so many people involved in, in, in what we created in the last 18 months. And if you are in this process, you didn't really realize it because everything happens step by step and now you are in the Premier League. The day after Huddersfield sealed promotion, thousands of fans packed St George's Square celebrating with the team. You were covering it. You've got to live these moments because they don't come around very often. You know what I mean? In a footballer's career, no matter win the odd trophy, the odd promotion, so every time you've got to milk the hell out of it until it's over and you have to start the hard work again. Welcome to the start of another Premier League season and an historic one for Huddersfield Town as they make their Premier League bow. What an adventure this is for Huddersfield. Do you feel like you've paid witness to a miracle? Yeah, I, I never thought it'd happen. Never, never, never at all. I mean, one of the things I heard uh, time and time again when uh, I joined Huddersfield Town was just give us one year in the Premier League. And it's an opening day victory for Huddersfield Town. A day they'll never forget. For me, the whole club changed then. We became a global interest. But we will never ever forget our roots. We'll never ever forget where we're from. Despite their dizzying success, Huddersfield have taken pains to remain a local fan-first club, keeping their training facility open to supporters and also ensuring long-time fans wouldn't be priced out of watching Town's Premier League adventure by making season tickets available at a staggeringly low cost. The John Smith Stadium in Huddersfield about to stage Premier League football for the very first time. The club rooted in its local community, striding out now onto the broadest stage it has ever occupied. For us, we wanted to reward loyalty for those people that have stood by us, and I think that's what makes us slightly different in that sense. Coming up next, we look at the mentality of a club prepared to do battle against the world's best. Does it fill you with fear that they can drop $100 million on a player? No problem. How can you compete? We trust and believe in ourselves, and you only ask for a chance. And we have a chance. We have a real chance.
Where you grew up, I grew up too, and we all dream of becoming professional footballers. You made your dreams a lot realer than most of us. Aged 11, you entered the Manchester City Academy. Yeah, when I signed there as a boy, it was like a dream come true for me to be able to play for a team as, as big as Man City, regardless if I was a United fan before. Even though you never played a first team minute? Yeah, that, that, that was difficult, but I worked my way up through every, every age group. Uh, until it got to a point where I was at a crossroads and do I, do I try and stay here uh, and, and try and get into a team which was then starting to spend the, you know, the big money. It, it, it became really difficult and we decided that it was best for me to leave and go out and try and find football elsewhere. You moved to the Huddersfield Town Academy. Huddersfield Town then, a world away from the Premier League. Many people when you made that move told you you were mad. Was it a difficult decision? It, it was, it, it was very difficult. Uh, it was hard for me when I left Man City. I was very fortunate in the sense that I had um, a staff member here who I'd known from my Man City days. So he rang me up and he said, listen, he said, I want you to come and play for Huddersfield with me. It's not going to be great money, it's not going to be long term. I just want you to come and play for six months. And I was kind of at the stage where I was thinking to myself, got nothing else here. So I said to him, OK, let's do it. And at the same time, did you feel, Tommy, be honest, that you were giving up on your Premier League dream? Never. I, I think regardless of wh where I went, it was a case of coming to a club and slowly having to work my way back up to get to where I was. The, the dream of the Premier League was never, it was never given up. Now it does get very real. Pep Guardiola, Jose Mourinho, Arsene Wenger, they're all coming to Huddersfield. Does it fill you with fear? No. That, that, that they can drop $100 million on a player, no problem. How can you compete? If we, if we stick in our identity and if we uh, believe and trust in ourselves and if we able to handle setbacks, which we will for sure have, everything can happen in, in the games, even if against the biggest dog in this division. But we trust and believe in ourselves and we know that in one game, you are always competitive. As a footballer or as a sportsman, you only ask for a chance. And we have a chance, we have a real chance. What you do out of your chance, this is up to us. To the outside world, Huddersfield being in the Premier League, the same level with London, Manchester, Liverpool, the traditionally mighty cities, is astonishing. But the true wonder of the Terriers is the cause for optimism. They give fans of every small team a reminder that even in an epoch where riches define success, any club can rise to the top flight as long as they remain true to themselves and summon an authentic collectivism, aggression and fearlessness. What Huddersfield have achieved proves anything is possible as long as you dare to dream.